and welcome to House Call with Dr. Mac, where you get a real doc with straight talk for the whole you. We are back, House Call community. It's season five, and if you've been following season five, we've had kind of a topsy-turvy type of season five personally here in the House Call community. And so if you want to go and hear what's going on, go check out that introductory episode that Wendell and I did, and you can catch it on Facebook if you go to the House Call with Dr. Mac podcast page you can just click on that link and find out what's going on but in the midst of all of that I'm super 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 excited to have here today Josh Josh you know what I didn't even get your last name I'm so sorry my last name is Craddock. See, Craddock. Yeah. That's right. Josh Craddock. Please forgive me, but we've been dealing, we've been talking, getting ready for this conversation, and we've been using first names. Yes, but ma'am. I just want to welcome you to the House Call community. Thank you. I'm super, super excited to be here. I've never done anything like this before, <laughs> so this is pretty cool. Oh, great. Well, you know, just have a, you know, sit down, relax, relax, you know, sit back, as they say, and, you know, we're just going to have a great conversation today. Okay. Excellent. And I usually like to let our community know how a guest came to sit down in the community. We talk about connecting our health dots. And so I like to say, you know, how did a guest, how do we get here? And you work at Klotz Karate Institute. Our kids started at Klotz Karate Institute this summer. And so going into the winter or going into the fall, back to school, I decided to sign up for one of the adult classes that's called the cage fitness class. I should have worn my shirt today. (laughs) And, you know, just being able to get up and move. And I said, I need to be in motion. And in doing this series that we're talking about mental health, mental wellness, and we highlighted depression in some of our stories, but just overall mental health, I realized that when I moved, I felt better. When I was able to get to class and and pound that bag a little bit, you know, <laughs> and being com- and then come home, it was like, huh, you let off some steam, you kind of let the pressure off the crock pot, so to speak, or you know, pressure cooker. For sure. And it was just you just felt better. So as we were going through this series, I remember stopping and saying to one of the instructors, hey, you know, I would really like to highlight you guys on our show because this is really helping me. And they were like, oh, we know exactly who they're going to pick to come sit down and talk. (laughs) And it was Josh. So welcome to the House Call community, as I said before. And that's how you've gotten here because they looked at your background. They looked at how how astute you are and what you do and so we're going to get into that background a little bit um, as we go along and just sit here and talk today cool so can you tell us how did you arrive at Klotz Institute um so I've been doing martial arts since I was six I'm currently 29 um and then when I moved from Virginia Beach to Maryland it's where my parents grew up actually uh-huh. PG County um I started with kick uh ah. just to start taking karate again okay um, so then my father had taken um, for years and then he get, was getting back into it and he yeah. wanted his kids to be in it and uh, I've been with kick ever since um, so that's since I was when I was eight years old wow. I was in third grade and uh, yeah I t- tested for my black belt when I was 11 um, really? my sister also has her black belt through kick um, she was she's two years younger than me she got her black belt when she was 10 and my father also has his black belt through kick he was in his uh, late 40s when he got his black really? belt. He had been taking karate on and off since he was uh, in college. Wow. So at University of Maryland. So um, very excited. We were we were actually it was pretty wild. We were all crying. Yeah. And oh. uh, a lot, you know, people knew my father for a long time. He would get hurt and have to drop out and then uh-huh, come back. Uh-huh. And then he travels. He's a pilot for a living. So oh, crazy, wow. awesome, wonderful day when he got his black belt. Yeah. Everyone in the school and everyone in our family is very proud. Um, wow. And so, yeah, so I trained at Kick. I was there the first day the Bowie Studio opened. Uh Um, And then um, our second location, our Columbia Studio, I was there the first day the Columbia Studio opened. Um, And I've been a teacher with Kick since I was, I believe, 13, uh, maybe 14. Um, I was doing it for student service learning hours to start. (laughs) And then um, I started, you know, obviously I started as my job. And I actually... I always say this. I never had a quote unquote like real job. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't like to say yeah. karate is a real job, yeah. but I never had a job that um, I didn't like. You know, mm. that was laborious and right. not enjoyable. Right. Um, 
uh, until I was got my internship in college. So I ah. only taught karate and I worked at camps and a lot of them were karate camps yeah, at right, kick. So right. uh, I've been around the block with kick for a while. Um, I have a lot of people there that are mentors, friends, teachers, mm-hmm. um, people that mean a lot to my life. Oh. Um, Mr. Ken has done a lot, yeah. me, a lot for me over the years and I can never thank him enough for all the things that he's taught me, all the things wow. that he's done. And um, same for Mr. Mike and Miss Jessica. Yes, so. and and they're just wonderful. You know, um, you were talking we were, while we were getting set up and talking. Um, you were saying how we could go back and see a picture of you, that eight little eight year eight yeah, year old yes, little ma'am. boy, and and see the glasses and the different haircut. Yeah. And so <laughs> those of you that are just listening to the audio, go check us out on the YouTube so you can see the transformation, the yeah. older <laughs> the older Josh. <laughs> And you were saying how you and Ms. Jessica were in class together. And then now, you know, she was a teacher. And now you guys have now are now peers. And how yeah. it all comes full circle. You taught one of the other instructors that we know now, Miss Rachel, who teaches our kids. Yeah, she and, teaches Cage that yes, you take. Yes, and yeah. she teaches Cage. Oh, yeah, and so they're both crazy. She, she was a child <laughs> when she first came to kick. Wow. Um, and then I was her teacher. And then I helped. Uh, I was her training partner. And helped prepare her everyone helped train yeah. but she and I specifically worked together uh, to train for a second degree black belt uh-huh. test which I believe was holy moly two years ago now wow. or something something along those lines so um that was a pretty awesome proud day and she's now going to be graduating college in May so yeah. I like to see her from a little kid so I went through this transformation and then Ken saw me grow up and now this is like this new wow. generation of people so yeah. yeah Kenny's seen a lot of people grow up he's had a lot of uh-huh. influences on a lot of people's lives there it's been amazing wow so. now you you have a very extensive background you know in, in preparing for this conversation like I said we've been texting we've been emailing phone calls um, I was looking at your credentials and it's just I'm like, wow, blown away. And you're so young. Thank you. So, Thank you. I, you know, can you nothing. tell us a little bit about your background? And then we're going to get into the conversation because I want people to understand that you really do understand the body and how this how this conversation is going to come full circle. So can you give us just a little bit of your Absolutely. credentials? Yes, ma'am. So um, I have uh, I've been playing sports um, and doing martial arts since I was a child, like mm-hmm. I said. Um, I've been involved actively in movement, exercise. Mm -hmm. Um, I I started learning about it, you know, when I was a kid, I've always been interested. And then I have two degrees in um, exercise science and sports studies. And they're from, I went to Towson University Uh in Baltimore. Right here, yeah. Yes, ma'am. And then um, I have a personal training certification through uh, National Strength and Conditioning Association. That's like one of the leading um, health and fitness organizations for athletic, uh, working with athletes. And I have uh, what's called the um, uh, a uh, uh, certified exercise physiologist, um, mm-hmm. uh, which is a, it's through American College of Sports Medicine (ACSM), and they're, if not the leading, one of the leading uh, professional organizations uh, on um, exercise health physiology, okay. especially clinical exercise, mm-hmm. um, and it's the highest uh, certification that you can hold. Uh, that doesn't require an advanced degree. Wow. Um, so at least they say. You know, so uh, um, so and, I like to try. And you know, this whatever. is why when I came to Jessica and I think it was the other Josh at, at Claude's, yeah. and they were just like, oh, we know who to get to <laughs> sit down and have this conversation with you. So let's, let's move towards what moving our body does for us. Um, you made a, a very profound statement um, when we were preparing just a minute ago and you said that learning how to defend yourself was the least, um, how did you say it? Least important. I love the way you said that. It was the least important aspect of martial arts that you gleaned. And it's pretty, pretty important. And it is pretty important. So it just goes to show highlight how important the other things were. What were some of the other things that you, that you gained going through Um, martial arts? I'd say just, one thing for sure was uh, confidence, mm-hmm. um, control wow. over my emotions, uh-huh. control over um, my, just who, who I am as yeah. a person, um, being comfortable in my own skin, being able to uh-huh. focus is another really big one. And yes. Focus slash concentrate. These are words that are tossed around, associated with martial arts a lot. Mm-hmm. A lot of um, children with behavioral issues yeah. and things like that are brought into martial arts and it, thought that maybe it might bring them some discipline mm-hmm. and some focus. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it definitely, definitely highlighted that for me. Um, okay. I, I, 
the idea that you have to pick a task, you have to not worry about what other students around you are doing, what things are being said, what things are going on, focus in, and then complete a, complete right. a task and a movement-oriented task. So that's the other thing too is the body awareness okay, and the um, ability to control my body and move it in space mm. the way that I want to, connect to my body. Okay, It's a skill that a lot of people don't, don't have right. you know, at a high level yeah. um, if you tell them, if they need to move they're not always conscious of the way that they're moving not to say that all martial artists are or whatever but okay. it did help me mm-hmm. significantly in that realm um, and then you know like just general balance general mm-hmm. uh, footwork general movement um, and just values yes. like what it ingrained in me and yes. the person that it kind of taught me to be and working through struggles and overcoming obstacles and yeah working hard towards goals um, and knowing that hard work will pay off and knowing that you put yourself through something that other individuals have been doing for thousands of years mm. and you know reaching the same goals I think that kind of makes you a part of this big historic yeah. traditional community or yes, whatever and it's really yes. cool and you don't just get at least I, you know I, we take pride at our dojo because you don't get handed your black belt, no, you earn you it. No, you don't. Um, you and don't we're get very proud of any that. belt. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. I really, I, I hate, to, I want to take a side side street, so to speak, here. I really appreciated that about the dojo. We walked in, so our son had done a little bit of martial arts at a community center about two summers prior. Okay. Because we just wanted to see what he would be interested in. Yeah. And then this past summer, I said, okay, sat them down, said, okay, this is what I think we should do. They were both excited, he and his sister. And when we walked in, because he already had a white belt from the other place. Right, you start with no belt. You start with no belt. And he was just like, wait a minute. If I had been in my other place, I'd probably be a brown belt by now. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. No, because I had already been by clots and I had observed and I had seen. And I said, this is a place we need to come and go. And so after the first class, because both of them were able to exempt, show and, and say, okay, we were able to listen. We were able to do this and show and tick off the little checklist. Yes, ma'am. Then they got their white belt. Yeah. Then they had to start earning their stripes. And I really appreciated that about the discipline discipline aspect of Klotz Institute. And I don't want us to just say that we're just talking about martial arts. Right, that's exactly, yeah. We're talking about movement. Movement, Just moving your body, you know. um, How, do you have any opinion or, you know, professional or even personal opinion about just what moving your body does for your brain? Absolutely, so um, the human body um, was designed to be in motion. That's mm-hmm. what it was made for. Um, yep. You know, like a hippo, right? Yeah. They're designed yeah. to lay around. You right. know what I mean? Right. Um, but uh, people, human beings, um, just the way that our, the, the way the angles of our joints, yes. the mobility at certain places, um, and just also the consequences of not moving, like mm. stiff, a lot of things just in the structure of the body, the way the muscles are put together, the way the bones are uh, put together, uh, the way the fascia is all connected, um, the way the brain innervates the body, et cetera, et cetera. The, we were meant to move. Yeah. We were meant to be active. Right. Um, and if you think through uh, history, um, let's say prior to... 60 years ago, 70, we could, uh, you know, go back and mm-hmm. find the exact date, mm-hmm. but let's say maybe the invention of the supermarket and the invention of leisure time, maybe, you yes. know what I mean? Like, because leisure time is big, right? Yes. Um, before that, unless you were an aristoc- aristocrat, right, 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 you didn't have free time really, because what were That's you doing? Right. You, you were, were surviving. Right, right. Right, exactly, you were, exactly. You didn't, That's true. If you, you didn't surviving. move, you didn't eat. If you didn't move, you didn't make money. If you didn't move, you didn't have a shelter. If you didn't move, you what you know you would your family wouldn't survive. That's essentially. right. Um, That's right. Pe- people were you know like an animal uh-huh. were living to survive. Yes, right? yes. And we kind of like had this in, this influx in wealth and this influx in technology mm-hmm. um, in history and yeah. kind of made m- movement more optional, right? And over time. Um. The more and more That's technology right. that we have, yes. and the more and more, yes. um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to use the word sedentary, but it's not necessarily the right term. But the, the but I'll use it. The more and more sedentary that our professions mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that our 
personal lives become, yeah. um, the less movement that's required. That's right. And in some ways, it's kind of cool because it is nice to be able to come home from a long day of work and watch a movie. Isn't that kind of right. nice? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I don't have right. to come home from a long day of work and then go pick my food from the garden <laughs> and then go t- till my garden right. and right. Um, f- you know do all these things. Right. There's a lot of c- conveniences mm-hmm. that exist now mm-hmm. that make life a lot easier for us. That's true. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm a big fan that I can click, hit a button and not have to and turn my heat on yes. and not have to build a fire right. every single day <laughs> right. to not freeze to death. I'm a big fan. So, but where's the line? So yeah. now yeah. I have from my phone, I can pretty much do anything. I don't even need to get up to go change my thermostat anymore because guess what? I got a little app on my phone that just goes, boop, change the thermostat. So there's 20 steps that day taken away. That's or whatever. Right. You know what I mean? So in general, we've created a lot of conveniences for ourselves and it's made our lives quote unquote easier and uh-huh. some way argue more enjoyable or whatever. Yes. However, it's also created this concept of lack of lack of movement. Yes. And we yes. go back to what we originally press, uh, started this was that yeah. the human body was made to move. Right. So we are seeing huge numbers of chronic conditions that really, I don't want to say never existed because I don't believe in absolutes really mm-hmm, anything. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I wasn't alive right, and I haven't right. done my research on like whether or not things like obesity existed. Mm-hmm. Of course, we said aristocrats a lot right, of times, right. they were blessed with the fact that they had a lot of money so they could sit around yes, and have people do yes, stuff for them. Right. But anyways, the average person yeah. was not facing uh, epidemics like type 2 diabetes You're on a regular right. basis, obesity, exactly. um, things like this sort. So with these kinds of conditions being created, they're coming from the fact that people move less and eat more more. because food Mm -hmm. is convenient to us. Guess what? It's It's in a store. We go up, we pick it up, we put it in a microwave for two minutes and we eat. There was no effort required for us to take energy in. Uh That's what Uh food is. Food is energy for our body, similarly like putting gas in a car. Yes. So, um, if I don't need to expend any energy to take energy in, it's very easy to start netting uh, more energy uh, in than energy out. Yes. If I could sit yes. on my couch all day, yes. expend no energy, but I could still eat all day, this is a problem, right? And so people are Huge. facing this all the time Huge. and we're discovering it. And thankfully, it's becoming much, much more um preached about yes. and awareness is being uh, uh, improved right. of the issues that are kind of our right. society is facing because people are facing a lot of health crises that yes. I don't want to say are not, you know, that could 100% be avoided. Yeah. But, you we, never I mean, that, but, yeah, but for the most part, the most we, part, could, we could be living a little bit higher level, a little bit more healthy. Exactly. If we moved more, ate less exactly. and controlled our, our lives a little bit more. And, um, from a physical health perspective Absolutely. and mental health perspective. Absolutely. I, I don't know about you, but when I move, when even if it's just to go for a walk in the neighborhood, the simple act of the pounding of my feet on the pavement yeah. seems to reset my brain. Yeah. That's the only way I can say it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how else to explain it to other people, but it's just simply when you do certain movements, like you say, um, when you're using the opposites of your body, there is something that happens in our brains. Yeah. And it just really, like you said, we are meant for movement. So how do you feel or have any of your clients um, or people in your class tell you how exercise or movement has helped them? Yeah, any, ab- any stories that absolutely. you can tell Absolutely. So... Um, it's a big key phrase right now in the health fitness world is uh, exercise is medicine. Mm, and I like um, that. It's, it's sort of like a new catchphrase or whatever, and you'll hear it a lot. Um, and it's this idea that um, a lot of issues, both physical and mental, um, it could be a depression yeah, type thing yeah. or mental health issues, mm-hmm. anxiety, things like that, or it could be physical health right. like heart disease yeah. or diabetes or right. things like this. Um, one of the biggest things that you can – quote unquote pre- prescribe is exercise Absolutely. Right? as movement Absolutely. And, and as movement. And I think one key thing to keep in mind is that exercise is sort of a 20th century, 21st century creation. Not necessarily. I mean, we had the Greeks in the Olympics right, competing. Right. However, but. for the most part, 
movement. I'd say movement. Move around. And you just said something as simple as walking, right? Something as simple as completing a physical task. Um, if you're active in your day, uh-huh. then you're going to see results, ah. right? Exercise is structured physical activity. Okay. We kind of go back to the conversation we we're just having about people not moving as much. My job is I sit at a desk. My job is that I type at a computer. My job is this. I drive a car. Mm -hmm. So in order for people to reach the amount of physical activity that yeah. both their brain and their physical body needs uh -huh. each day, uh, exercise is a way that they can uh, fit it in. Okay. Like, hey, okay. I worked all day. What did I do? Sat in a car to get to work, sat at work, sat in a car to get home. So now I've done nothing or relatively speaking mm -hmm. nothing. I'm going to go take an hour and I'm going to move for that hour and I'm going to move at a high intensity or a high or an elevated intensity. Okay, I'm going to fit okay. it in. So, um, if you are a construction worker mm -hmm. hey, or you walk all day for your job, a mailman right. on their feet or a male woman, right? On their right, feet. Right. right? right. Okay. Eh, okay. Right. Yeah, and so the yeah. exercise is sort of like extra at that mm -hmm. point, but exercise has been proven, um, neurologically, physiologically, yeah, yeah. to have very positive effects yes. on the brain. Yes. Um, it releases a, a, a substance in the body called endorphins, yep. which are uh, associated with um, decreasing pain mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. increasing feelings of euphoria. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Um, specifically, often associated with cardio-oriented exercise. Okay. Okay. And um, it also produces uh, neurotransmitters in our brain yes. and has effects on neurotransmitter uh, neurological connections in our brain for dopamine, mm -hmm. serotonin, and the adrenal uh, yes, hormones. Yes. And these are all associated with feelings of well-being, feelings yes. of pleasure, and um, feelings of, I guess, happiness or, yes, or yes. Uh, s s s satisfaction. Yes. And so um, for individuals struggling with this, going back to the exercises medicine concept, mm -hmm. Um, not to say that everybody could just go for a run right, and not have right. to, that would fix their problem, but it could certainly aid in their cause if they moved and they could have their brain start to create those pathways yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and then I think too, there's a body image concept, mm. right? Um, psychological aspect of if you like the way that you look, if you're confident in the way yeah. that you look and confident in the way that you feel yeah right yeah. and so that translates people have a little bit of a glow about them right, especially i've worked right. with as you said people that i've worked with I and mean, i've helped a lot of people lose a lot of weight okay. i've helped a lot of people train for mm -hmm. a lot of events maybe that they hadn't been able to do or have like people complete their first 5k yeah, or yeah. train for their black belt exam or um lose a lose a lot of weight mm -hmm. or um, I mean, all so kinds of different. Of a, a lot of things coming off of injuries is another oh. really big one. People get hurt. It's very common for people to get injured. I think about that. Yeah. And then that'll yeah. number one affect your physical body because yep. it's literally hurt. It's, right. it's it's damaged, and it'll affect your mental health a lot too yes. because you go from like, well, I'm damaged goods, and you start to have this negative image of yourself. And am I ever going to get back to where I was? And when you can get someone to kind of get past that yeah. and move and who knows if they'll ever be the quote unquote the same as right, they were, but right. at least, you know, working towards where they were prior to an injury. Um, and really anybody can do anything that yeah. they put their mind to and work hard to and put, put the time and energy in towards, uh, that can be profound effect on their brain and on their body. And so I've helped a lot of people. Um, it's a passion of mine is helping people come back from injuries mm. or, um, overcome physical, uh, limitations. Okay. And when people start to develop a, more positive image of themselves yeah. that they believe that they can is a self-efficacy thing. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. I'm too fat. I'm too old. I'm too, I don't like negative language. That If you mm -hmm. work with me, I'm, I don't allow any negative language. Oh, that's um, great. I'm, I, 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 I always correct people when they speak um, of themselves or of others that way. Um, and um, it, you start to build that self-efficacy, which is just a, self-efficacy is just the belief that you are, will be successful and something that you endeavor on or something mm -hmm. that you try to, yeah. um, that you set out to do. And if you can build that in people, um, it really starts to have a better effect on their overall well being, wow. their, um, just everyday lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think one more piece of that too yeah. is the more that you do, mm -hmm. the more that you want to do. And the less that you do, the less that you want to do. 
And it's this vicious cycle a lot of times of like, well, I've got hurt and I've been eating more and I'm sitting on the couch and I can't move. And it's like, ding, I got to get up and start moving again. And it's like, that sounds like a lot of work. And I don't know if I can do that. And it just becomes easier to continue to do less. Yeah. But then when you start moving, it just starts to have this effect on you of like, I can do that. I feel good about doing uh-huh. that. I accomplished that. Uh-huh. I am able to do that again. And the more you want to do, and it just comes back and you're like, yeah. I started exercising one day a week. Guess what? I started doing two. And you get to the point where people, I mean, people come almost too far in the other direction and become obsessed. <laughs> if I didn't get my workout in that day, <laughs> they're going to lose their minds, right? right? They're almost right, addicted right, right. to it or whatever. Right, right. And um, that's a whole other topic yeah. because we're trying to encourage people to move. So if we get to that point, we'll deal with that. Do you know, yeah, deal with that problem when that time comes. Oh my comes. gosh, Josh, okay. you are, I wish you guys could see us sitting here and you can go over to the YouTube channel and watch it and watch this conversation as well. But I am just so excited about everything you're saying because you're preaching to the choir, so to speak. Everything you're saying is just resonating, not only on a professional level, but on a personal level for me. And like you said, just talking about doing less, you know, and then you get into that whole rut and that negative feedback loop and then you know, and just starting to do something, just do one thing, you know, and it's that domino effect. It becomes that synergistic effect and it then spills over into the rest of your life. And that is just one thing, one nugget that I believe was the best nugget that we could have uncovered today. Yeah, small was, victories, small, small victories. victories, little goals can become big goals. I like that. I like that. Oh my goodness, this is so good. This is so good. So, what are some of the classes that you teach uh, right now? Um, oh man, I teach a lot of stuff. So okay. right now, I teach. Uh, well, I teach karate. Okay. And I teach um, boxing. Uh, ah. Both technical and uh, for cardio, for fitness. Okay, okay. K- kickboxing mm-hmm. for um, uh, fitness. Okay. Me. And uh, I teach group cycle. Group cycle. That's uh, um, a spin class. Spin? Oh. But spin, so spin is often, um, spin is a specific brand. Ah. So you can't say you teach spin. Okay. Unless you're Mad Dog Spin certified. So, but it's just sort of one of those colloquial things if you'll just say a spin class. But, mm-hmm. um, Technically, it's, it's like you can't say you wear Nikes. You say yeah, I wear athletic shoes unless ah, you're specifically wearing Nike brand. Gotcha. So it's just often t- termed like that. But okay. spin or but I, group cycle. Group cycle. Um, okay. I teach resistance group resistance training. Um, and what is group resistance training? Um, it's I thought, weight training as a as, as a, a class. Group. We usually oh. will count a lot of times. I'm terrible at counting. I'm super <laughs> non rhythmic, uh, so I don't count in my classes. But they'll do okay. the eight. typically group uh, aerobic classes and things like that are taught to an eight count. Ah, uh, um, yes, I know what I, you're saying now, yes. I can do it. I have been trained to do it, but um, it's really hard for okay. me. And uh, I personally find that I, uh, my brain is focused on the count. Uh, I lose touch with my people. So I don't count in my oh, classes, sorry. but I, I did try, and I tried to learn. <laughs> uh, but I think people got more out of it when I just was doing me. Gotcha. Um, but I teach, so I teach group, group resistance training. I teach boot camp classes, um, which is basically like back to basics. We'll do outside, I mean, typically outside, oh. a lot of running, a lot of moving. Okay. Um, and just a, it's sort of like they call it boot camp because it's just back mm-hmm. to basics fitness. Sometimes we'll use some basic equipment like bands or mm-hmm. dumbbells or kettlebells. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times we'll just use picnic tables, uh, benches, tree so branches, that stuff that's around. around. Get out and move and get outside and, and have fun. And it's uh, usually a team oriented thing, oh, just like okay. a boot camp uh-huh. in, you know, m- m- military okay. or whatever. Okay. Okay. Um, I teach uh, HIT. Which is uh, high intensity interval training. Whoa. Um, okay, I've and heard of those. That is those are crazy. Yeah, <laughs> basically that is bouts of very high intensity exercise yeah. followed by bouts of recovery. Mm. Um, I teach it in a circuit oriented uh, okay. manner, which means like we do, you know, two to five exercises in a row mm-hmm. uh, without a lot of break, and then, then repeat, the break. Okay. and then we re- do a break. And okay. the idea behind that. Um, a couple of things that that's been shown to do is number one, uh, continues uh, burning fat for mm-hmm. longer periods of time post exercise. Right, I've heard um, of that. And it's called EPOC. Um, yes. And um, uh, sorry, um, excess post op, uh, excess post exercise Ox- oxygen, oxygen consumption. consumption. You got it. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, and so, yeah, that was a mouthful. Sorry. Right. Um, EPOC. We're going with that. Uh, and and uh, look it up. And uh, right. and so. 
Um, uh, so anyways, and so also it's really, really, really good for combining cardio training and um, like a strength, strength training, right? right exactly. Right, that right. you do multiple things and I'm getting my heart rate up mm -hmm. and I'm not necessarily maximizing my strength, but the average person doesn't necessarily need to be lifting up as much weight as they can because what about most things that you do in your daily life is doing things over and over mm -hmm. again. Um, so increasing that muscle endurance, okay. um, somewhat muscle strength and cardiovascular health as well, all That's in one good. workout. That's cool. So, and then I teach um, uh, yoga. Uh, so I'm also right. a yoga instructor we're and we're talking, um, going using the um, martial arts analogy of the yin and yang, yes. right? Yes. Um, a lot of fitness and exercise and stuff is very yang, which means like high intensity, mm -hmm. go, 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 like up, up, up. And a lot of life really requires a balance. So we right. look at that yin side. So I have, uh, I do a lot of yoga. I do a lot of qigong. I don't teach qigong, but I practice oh, okay. it and I take it. I actually, that's a class I go to. Oh. And, um, <laughs> and, and yoga as well. I, I also am a yoga student. I'm a student of everything. So everything that I do, I'm also always learning. Um, and the moment you consider yourself an expert in something, it's the moment that you should be trying to go learn more about it. You know what I mean? There's always someone better than you. Exactly. Um, exactly. So, but yeah, so, um, but I do teach yoga. I'm actually getting ready to finish in December my 200 hour um, registered yoga teacher program. So very excited about that. Um, but I had a couple of um, weekend certifications that I've been teaching for a while and using that. So um, I love, 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 love teaching yoga because it gives wow. the other side because people, there's a mentality that people believe that they didn't work out if they didn't quote like they didn't sweat. Mm -hmm. I didn't sweat or I didn't. I'm not. My heart rate's not racing. Then I didn't work out. Um, and a lot of times people get injured working out like that. They go to the gym every day. They work out for this really really vigorous uh, high intensity uh, workout and come back to bite them over the time. They do that over and over. And life is about balance, yin and yang. And the like yoga that. provides the yin for me. It provides the calming effect. I like that. And also, we're talking about the mind here. Yoga, there's a ton of studies and a ton of stuff um, that shows uh, the positive effects on the brain mm -hmm. coming from yoga yep. training. Yep. Um, the mind-body connection. Yes. The idea that uh, my, my body and my mind are operating as one unit, yes. not separate. Um, and that my exercise can have a positive effect on my mental health is huge with yoga and also the idea of being present and um when you're on a yoga mat you can be present in any form of exercise you can really be present in anything if you're cooking mm. or you're um, playing with your kids if you're not thinking about what do i need to do later in the day or so and so is sick and i need to remember to do this or i need to oh crap i forgot to take care of that chore or whatever but you're just focused fully 100% on that moment, that's a wonderful thing. And that's one of the big things about yoga is that it really encourages presence, is that, yeah. oh, you're moving through these motions and you're doing this deep breathing. Mm -hmm. And um, guess what you realize uh, at a moment? You have this light bulb and you're like, I didn't think about anything that's been pissing me off recently. I didn't think about anything that's been on my plate. Yeah. All I thought about was breathe in, breathe out, reach a little deeper it's wonderful so if you haven't tried yeah. yoga go get on a mat all right i wow. highly recommend it okay i'll go that, take a yoga class yeah so i always learn so much when i sit down with anyone telling their story or an expert that comes into the community and again this has been one of those conversations and josh i'm looking at our time and we're gonna have to round the corner as we say and wrap this up um, in a nice tidy little bow but before you leave the community, we usually ask our guests to give our community a tip of the day. It can be on the topic we're talking about, or it can be on anything that's on your heart. But if you would be so gracious to give our community a tip of the day, we would be honored. Absolutely, yes ma'am. Actually, it's wonderful, it ties right back into what I was just saying, is mm -hmm. I think the number one thing that, you, that we can do mm -hmm. to improve our health, physical and mental, especially mental health, mm -hmm. is be mindful. Be mindful and work on your mindfulness. And what that means is being aware of what you're doing in the present moment and considering everything that's going on now and making choices and doing things with a purpose and not just mindlessly. We go through the motions a lot during our day, right? And a lot of times, if you're sat in your car, drove to work, and you can't remember a moment of your car ride there, 
right? Have you ever been talking to somebody and realized you didn't hear a word they said? Have you ever um, lived a day and then realized that you ate terrible and didn't move and sat around all day and you feel like crap and you're like, I wonder why? And then you realize why? Because I didn't make any healthy choices that day. So the more that we can work on being present and focusing on what's going on at that moment and how it connects to the rest of our lives, the more that we're gonna be able to make better choices and the more that we're gonna probably appreciate things going on around us a lot more and maybe even be able to tell others that and um, feel it in our own bodies, mm -hmm. feel it in the people around us and the things like that. So I think work on your mindfulness and everything else will come full circle. If you're eating bad food, be aware of it right. and then fix it. If you're having a lazy day, be aware of it and then try to try to add movement in the next day. If you're having a great workout, be aware of it and be thankful for it. You know, you know what I mean? Like, and, and be focused on what's going on now yeah. Yeah. and not in the past, not in the future, not in fantasy world, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but right now. Right now. Yeah. I no better place in the present. I love that. Oh my goodness. And with that community, I'm going to leave that right there and let that just soak in. So we'll see you guys back here next time. Bye now. Thank you.